In this microeconomics revision video, we're going to take a few minutes to think about the nature of collusion, which we typically find in an oligopolistic industry. So collusion occurs when two or more suppliers, two or more businesses work together to set or fix price or output. And collusion is a type of anti-competitive behaviour that is nearly always illegal in, in most certain Western advanced economies. By working together, by colluding, firms can set higher prices and limit output. They might do it through an explicit price-fixing agreement, I'll give you an example in a second, or more subtle means such as tacit collusion, where basically firms follow the actions of a rival and act accordingly. Now, to prevent collusion, many firms, many countries, many governments have antitrust laws, uh, collusion laws, with penalties that prohibit firms such as fines, a percentage of turnover might be fined, or even the threat of prison sentences for directors involved. So collusion takes place when rival companies within an industry cooperate or collude for their own mutual benefit. And it's a common feature of business behaviour in imperfect competition, such as oligopoly and duopoly. Now, you'll be able to link your economics of collusion to game theory. And of course, we have a separate video on the economics of game theory. Now, collusion is not quite the same as cooperation. A lot of business cooperation is legal. It's where firms find opportunities to work together to achieve mutual benefits, but in a way that does not harm consumers or the market. And a really good example is where firms agree to set industry standards, safety standards, for example, in building or uh, industry standards for airbags in vehicles that can benefit consumers by ensuring consistency and compatibility of products. So cooperation is generally encouraged, in particular, if it leads to those positive spillovers for firms and consumers. Now, tacit collusion is any type of collusion where firms don't explicitly agree to collude, but they act in ways that kind of hint, suggest they're colluding, or the wink and the nod. And one example is a firm raising their price and other firms deciding to follow suit. They may be engaging in tacit collusion. Now, that's really hard to prove, but clearly can have negative effects on consumer welfare. So price leadership is a specific type of tacit collusion where one firm takes a lead in setting prices and the other firms typically follow suit. The main aim of price fixing is sometimes called joint profit maximisation. The aim is to increase profits for all firms involved. Uh, you don't have to compete on price. That reduces uncertainty, makes the market more stable and predictable. Uh, you can use this power to keep new entrants out of the market. So you might even collude to set low prices if new firms enter. But the key concept here is joint profit maximisation. Fixed price, restrict output within a cartel to maximise the joint profits for the firm's concern. In other words, the cartel is trying to achieve a monopoly profit outcome rather than maximising individual firms' profits. And a really good example, many students use OPEC in their uh, exams, but I would go to Canada and look at the Canadian maple syrup cartel. I've called it a heist there. Uh, in Quebec, there's a provincial organisation known as the Federation of Quebec Maple Syrup Suppliers, and they really do control the majority of supply in Canada. Now, they set production quotas and prices for maple syrup, which is then held in a kind of buffer stock or strategic reserve. Funnily enough, it's called the Global Strategic Maple Syrup Reserve. And limiting supply can help to stabilise and keep prices high. And as you know, if you've ever enjoyed the product, Canadian maple syrup is not cheap. Now, here's the diagram that you might be able to use if you want to analyse how a cartel can work. On the left-hand side, we have the market, the industry, supplied by firms in the industry and, in theory, controlled by a cartel. And on the right-hand side, the price, cost and output of an individual firm, a member of the cartel. Now, the aim of the cartel uh, is to maximise profit. If this was a competitive market, the price would be P1, where the industry demand curve meets the industry supply curve. 
but a cartel can restrict output, shown here, drive the price up to a higher price, the cartel price. So restrict output, maximise profits, where marginal revenue meets marginal cost. There's the output, max MR meets MC, drive the price up to a cartel price. So we, this is a good diagram straight away for showing how a collusion might lead to higher prices for consumers. Now, each firm in the cartel then has to accept the cartel price. They become a price taker. So that becomes effectively their demand curve. Uh, and the way that the cartel works, by the way, the scale on the axis, the x-axis on the second diagram, the right-hand diagram is not the same as on the first. But within the cartel, each supplier will be set a quota. Remember the Canadian maple syrup example? So they have to produce a given output so that the cartel can control supply. Uh, we have given the charging at that price, that's the average cost of supply for that quantity. So there's the profit that the individual cartel member might make. So cartels aim to maximise profits for the members as a whole, set a high price, and then impose output quotas on individual firms. Now, you might already be able to see from that diagram, we won't show it in this video, but if the cartel member there was able to increase output a little bit and charge that high price, they could make more profit. So although the cartel might be maximising joint profits, any individual firm could increase their own profits by just expanding output and undercutting the cartel price, maybe by a small margin, maybe undercutting uh, surreptitiously an unofficial price. And this is indeed one reason why cartels are undermined and eventually collapse. Namely, individual firms cheating or reneging on output quotas. And game theory helps to explain why it may be rational for firms to undercut a collusive agreement. Just as a quick uh, little test here, maybe press the pause button. Can you think of two conditions that make it easier more likely for firms in a cartel to offer for a cartel to operate sorry within an oligopoly what do you think well many many conditions let me just pick out two one is that cartels nearly always work best when there's a relatively small number of suppliers producing a homogenous product the output of which is easily easily measurable so if you think about industries such as cement or brick making or glass or steel, the output is fairly homogenous. It's a physical, tangible output, so you can impose a quota and it can be measured. The second condition making it easier for firms to collude is when there are high barriers to entry. So you're not likely, you can not likely to get a, an influx of new firms that might undermine the cartel. And also where established firms have similar objectives, similar aims in mind. They're all following the same hymn sheet, if you like, singing from the same hymn sheet. So it makes it easier to aim for joint profit maximisation. However, we also know that collusion often breaks down Cartels are rarely permanent. Maple syrup cartels have been around for many years. OPEC's been around for many years. But just recently, was it Angola left the OPEC oil cartel because they wanted to raise their own output? So can you give me two reasons why collusion between firms within a, a cartel often breaks down? Well, here are my two reasons. First of all, the temptation to cheat. Firms that collude are always tempted to cheat on an agreement. If one firm overproduces, lowers their price, it can gain more customers and make more money. And if that's true for one firm, it's probably true for all the other firms. So game theory predicts that cheating is likely. And secondly, the entry of new firms into the market. Often new firms, new businesses have different models, different aims, and they aren't necessarily willing to abide by the rules or the laws of the cartel. So if the market becomes more contestable, cartels often break down. And I think a good example of that would be the, the rapid expansion of low-cost airlines. Um, you know, American uh, Southern, Southern Airlines, uh, Ryanair, EasyJet, that essentially undermined the cosy cartel of the established carriers uh, 20 or 30 years ago. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I've taken you through the analysis of collusion 
some of the reasons why collusion might work, but also why it might break down. Thanks for joining in, as always. Take care, stay safe, stay positive, and see you sometime soon.